Hello, this is Mark from the Swamp School. I would like to talk to you today a little bit about the Waters of the U.S. rules that are due for comment in about a week. It's not even a few days, it's just a few days. Uh, April 15th, if you're keeping track, it's also when your taxes are due, if you haven't done your taxes yet. Just a heads up, get both of these done. The issue is we want to go over what is actually being proposed and why this is important to everyone. In 1972, Congress had passed the Clean Water Act, and despite President Nixon's veto, they still got it passed. And the issue was that all waters of the United States were considered waters of the United States. Maybe if we took the word of and put in uh, and replaced that word, so waters in the United States were considered essentially public property, property of the people of the United States. And so the intention of Congress when they first passed this law was that all waters would be considered jurisdictional. There wasn't really an issue of non, the word jurisdictional wasn't even a word back then. They really didn't deal with that. They dealt with primarily all waters were, of course, for public consumption and domain and so forth. And the issue is the nexus that makes this all legal is a thing called the Commerce Clause, which is Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. The idea is that water in and of itself has an economic value. If you want an example of that, go down to the 7-Eleven and they get kind of upset if you just walk into one of the refrigerated cabinets and grab a bottle of Dasani and walk out. Even though it's just water, it is still technically a commerce-related item and that water in the bottle is not actually what they're selling. What they're selling you is the packaging and the transportation and the refrigeration and all that. The water in and of itself is still public property. And there are actually some weird kind of old water rights rules about restricting people's access to water and the fact that water is meant to be free because it is in the public domain. So in that, <clears throat> what does this have to do with the Waters U.S. rules? The Waters U.S. rules that have been proposed attempt to limit what things will be considered jurisdictional and what things will not. So only certain waters will be regulated and certain waters will not. Unfortunately, this rule does a very f f poor attempt at trying to delineate that. And the reason it's so difficult is because it was never intended to delineate the difference between a jurisdictional water and a non-jurisdictional water. All waters are jurisdictional. And the argument, of course, goes back to the thing that allows Congress to regulate this is the fact that a waters of the United States <coughs> is related to commerce. So all you have to do is prove commerce. Where this got messed up was in 2001 with the Swank decision where the Supreme Court had ruled that migratory birds did not provide a commerce nexus to a water. The Army Corps of Engineers had made a decision that based on that, isolated wetlands were not jurisdictional. Well, that was a leap. That's not what the Supreme Court ruled on. They just simply said birds don't do it. Uh, but they didn't actually answer the question as to whether the thing was jurisdictional or not. From that, we have had unending confusion, lawsuits, and so forth. But at the end of the day, any time the Supreme Court has asked the question as to whether something is commerce connected, if the answer is yes, then it is considered under federal jurisdiction. If the answer is no, then perhaps not. But on even a puddle out in the middle of a farm field, that water will evaporate, find its way into the clouds. The clouds will then rain on a water treatment plant. The water treatment plant will process that water and put it in that bottle of Dasani. That is the economic nexus to make the whole thing jurisdictional. So that's sort of the argument we're having kind of against these rules because these rules attempt to delineate what is considered jurisdictional and not. And the argument really is that we shouldn't even be asking the question, waters have been meant to be regulated since 1972 as waters of the United States and waters in the United States. So if you disagree with me, I would love to hear your comments. The only, the only thing I would ask is that you also disagree in that format and put it up in, to the EPA website. If you agree with me, even better, I always like when people agree with me, uh, even better, just simply uh, post that up to the EPA website. We've put the comment link to in, as a comment in this YouTube uh, post. Uh, below the, the video here, so you can l link over to that, but please post your comments. you, you got to get them in before April 15th. Don't forget you got taxes too on that same date, so that's kind of fun, uh, but we do want to hear from you and definitely get that into EPA. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this and, and let us know if you have any questions. You can always just comment below on our, our posts. We'd love to hear from you and I will see you in the swamp. Take care.